Paul Perry Peacock here with Wilderness Innovation and uh, I'm up here uh, in the Uetta Mountains doing a little trek here and this one's going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to eat. <laughs> so I haven't, uh, as of about right now, I haven't eaten uh, for 24 hours and so we're going to get uh, going to get about three days of no eating in here and see what happens. And I'm taking, uh, as you can see, my backpack, which I'll show you a little more during the trek, but it's a Roy Croft pack frame, and we're using our uh, PST as the, basically as the pack bag lashed onto there, and all my gears uh, down inside of there. So let's go ahead and head out on the trail here. Now well, here's some of the terrain I'm in up here in these uh, mountains. Another little lake down in there. I believe on this little trek I'll probably pass by about 18 or 20 of them. Wow, well, isn't this beautiful? It's another another beautiful lake up here. So I'm, I'm thinking I might try to maybe go on a little further before I set up camp tonight so let's get on the trail well I got me a little fire going here got my hammock set up over there right here at this beautiful lake and uh, so now it's this is kind of odd now because because uh, here I am I'm sitting around the campfire I'm at a lake I'm used to eating right now, and I'm not eating. <laughs> I guess that's that's one of the odd things about um, doing this little trek and uh, do three or so days of of trek without any food at all, just drinking water. And uh, so I mean that that kind of makes a difference because that's one of the kind of the fun highlight things of of camping is going out and you know building your campfire or whatever getting your stove going or whatever you're doing and cooking up a nice meal and just kind of sit back and enjoying it out in the out in the wilds here so it's kind of odd because I'm out here okay I don't have any my camp set up I don't have anything to cook I don't have anything else to do <laughs> so probably all I gotta do is uh, get me some water and heat it up in the fire. It's a lot easier to drink, uh, you know, try to keep extra hydrated to keep my stomach full. And uh, it's a lot easier to drink plenty of water when you're drinking it hot. So, so I do that. I might even pinch off some pine needles and do a little pine needle tea or something. Well, here's my, uh, here's my camp for last night. It uh, showered during the night. So I did pull my uh, PST, my tarp, over top, and it's kind of a odd configuration, I'm sure you see. <clears throat> and then I've got my uh, survival blanket wrapped around my uh, hammock, and uh, made a very nice, cozy night's rest. And all I did for my tarp is I just pitched it on the diagonal. On the ridge line, and I pulled up on the center tab in the middle so that any rain could shed off of there. And I just kind of crudely pulled out in a couple places to give me more space down inside. I'll show you around around this side. I just pulled out down there, and it's not fancy at all. We didn't have any kind of blowing rain. It was just showers just coming coming straight down. So that worked just fine for me. Had it been a little more blowy, I'd pitched it down a little tighter. But that worked just fine. I thought I'd show you the, the pack frame. <clears throat> so there's the pack frame that I used to carry my gear on. Uh, just... Uh, Two, two, two sticks, uh, um, 
from armpit to fingertip long and a, a couple more inches beyond that and then the bottom piece is just a little wider than your hips and then just all lashed together so now then this this morning um, I'm I'm into day two now without any food uh, about a, well about a day and a half <clears throat> so to fill my stomach I need to I'm gonna drink some water which that's what I did yesterday and last last night I or, well basically when I got to camp I was drinking as much water as I could and um, so this morning I'm gonna heat up some water I can drink more I can drink more water if I drink hot water <clears throat> And it's a little cool up here anyway, so it'll taste good. But I thought I'd probably uh, uh, pull some pine needles and make a little make a little pine needle tea. I've got my little uh, I've got my little uh, <coughs> nano stove from Firebox. Steve wanted me to test out uh, this little. Uh, Wind windscreen wing that uh, clips onto here. So I'm going to be going to be doing that. I'm going to be using the Trangia stove here. So I'll get all that going and see the sun. Sun's trying to peek out from some of the clouds. Maybe uh, maybe it won't be so rainy today. I'm gathering a. Uh, some needles here for some needle tea, pine needle tea, and uh, <clears throat> even though it's August up here, some of these some of these young little trees and that are still putting out some still putting out some fresh young needles. Um, you can use the older ones, but they're a lot stronger. They're really tough and everything. These are really soft, and you get a lot of flavor out of them and they say you get some even some vitamin C. That's that's really plenty, but I wanted to make kind of a maybe a little stronger tea because this is my meal today <laughs> since we're not eating up here for three days. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to go back to camp and see if my water should be getting warm here, and and uh, I'll make get me some tea going here and get ready for the day. Well, there's my uh, my weekender Optimus weekender pot with the little heat exchanger down here. It work, works real well with the little transia burner in there, and uh, I got that going down in there. I've got this um, the windscreen on here. The wind is blowing from that direction. <clears throat> That's doing a very nice job of of helping to keep that flame in in place with a good breeze has been even a little breezier than now it looks like that water is about to boil uh, dump those in there and let those steep in there a good little bit and then we'll now have me a little bit of some needle tea here Okay, here's breakfast. <clears throat> 24 ounces of needle tea. <laughs> the nice thing with these, uh, more or less the way I picked them off of here, the, the needles are mostly in little clusters like this. I don't have a ton of little needles to strain off or whatever. Well, it does taste better than just plain old hot water. <coughs> so there's there's the needles down in there. Get a little angle on there so you can see them. 
and a lot of times you may not use that many needles for this but since this is my meal and I've been just drinking water only you know after after a while you want a little kind of some kind of flavor in there so I do have a little there's a little piney kind of flavor it's almost it's almost citrusy more like the um, more more like a peel of citrus rather than the fruit but <laughs> but uh, anyway not too bad a little uh, a little flavor of any reasonable kind is better than just plain hot water but And are still a little chill in the air this morning, so it does uh, it does feel uh, does feel good to have something nice and warm going down, and uh, and that little and that little flavor is good. I I don't uh, I did sleep good last night. In fact, uh, since I started using the survival blanket wrapped around my hammock. I found I'm, I'm sleeping so comfortable it's normally camping you know first first thing in the morning you want to pop right out and get going but I'm, I'm sleeping so comfortable I don't want to get out of bed <laughs> it's making me lazy <clears throat> but anyway but I'm I'm feeling good for uh, you know uh, I don't know what I'm at 24 30 <clears throat> I guess I'm about 36 no, I'm more than that. About 38 hours now without any food or whatever. And I've trekked back up into here and kind of haven't stayed right on the trail coming to here. I've explored out and around a little bit uh, getting to here yesterday. And then today I've been down around the hiking around the lake a little and stuff like that. Whoops. <clears throat> One nice thing is I, if you get a little sloppy like I just did, <laughs> It's just water <laughs> but uh, I don't know it looks like maybe it's gonna be an overcast day today I'm not sure we might have it's been rainy most of the week here so I don't know it might continue but I thought it might be kind of slowing down but I don't know whatever it is we'll deal with it <clears throat> but my uh, my plan for for today here is I finish up this tea and then I'm gonna boil up another uh, thing of water here and uh, and then let it I'm just gonna stash that in my pack and then a little later on I have some uh, some flavored waters or I have one thing it's <clears throat> I'm trying not to do anything with really calories uh, one flavored water pack is um, called uh, what's it called real lemon and real lime they're little packet things and um, <clears throat> They have only 10 calories for a whole packet, so it's I'm really not getting much out of it when normally I'd be getting a couple thousand calories a day. And I have another one my wife got. She does Melaleuca, and um, she got these flavor things, and they're, <clears throat> I can't remember, though they're zero calories, so anyway, <clears throat> not that I'm, not that I'm that much I'm just trying to try not to put anything really into me but water and uh, so I'm just really flavoring the water here but I really I feel pretty good <clears throat> last night I <clears throat> I mean yesterday I really just more felt um, just I think the habitual thing of snacking or having a lunch or having a dinner this morning having a breakfast it's kind of in your head <clears throat> to eat so I don't have any really hunger pains but just but just kind of the urge that hey I need to eat and it's and you kind of feel that but last night a little bit I not too far before I went to bed I did I was feeling a little bit of <clears throat> something in my stomach you know a little but I don't know I don't this morning I got up I hadn't felt anything really um, and I'm gonna down this 24 ounce of tea and pack up camp and load up my pack frame I might 
I may show you how I load that up. I don't know. We'll see. <coughs> the bad thing, I have two cameras. The camera I'm on now is, it's, um, it's not really good for wide angles. So I don't know. I'll have to see. I'll have to see what I can do. I, I was charging my batteries for the other canyon on the, or for the other camera on the drive up here and I left them in the charger in the truck. <laughs> so I have no batteries for my other camera so everything has to be done with this one. <clears throat> and it's it's good in a lot of ways but it it doesn't have as wide an angle as that other one. But we'll we'll see what we can do here. And uh, anyway, I don't want to bore you too much. <laughs> but I'm having a good time up here. I love I love being up here. I love seeing the scenery. I love laying my in my poncho made up as a hammock at night with my survival blanket around me. It's I mean it's heaven, man. It's it's so comfortable. And having my little tarp thrown over me even though I showed you earlier it's pretty ragged looking, you know, as far as <clears throat> being symmetrical or some kind of organized thing, you know. It's just but last night I was laying in there and the rain's coming down, hitting on that thing and everything and I <clears throat> I stayed nice and dry and cozy in there and it's nice hearing that rain coming down and you're in there all snug and I, I don't know I love being outside and even being out in the rain and I don't know we may be I may be wearing the poncho as a as actually a rain poncho today hiking on up here I gotta go on up there's a bunch of switchbacks to get up more on top here and <clears throat> so We'll see what happens, but whatever it is, we're going to have a good time. Right here uh, is the uh, corner of my of my tarp right here. And I've got that tab secure. This You can see this is an old tarp. We had the black tabs and they're coyote now. But anyway, I just keep on using them. But anyway, instead of tying this end off, I just put a toggle in there. And then uh, and that... That just uh, keeps everything in place. So I just shove a little, just a stick through there. And you're saving more knots and more configuration. Now this toggle here, <clears throat> what I've got done is I've gone through the tab and then, and then you can see the, you can see the ridge line uh, cord right here. So I have, I have actually a good amount of tension so when I pull up on that it holds this thing in place and it doesn't move so without using normally I'd have to tie either a, use a prusik or something like that to hold this up but barring really really bad weather this does pretty good and it allows me so I can I can withdraw the uh, the tarp and keep it bunched up at the foot into my hammock if I want and when I need if I need to use it I just grab the toggle here and just pull it all the way to the other end till it's tight and then I've got a uh, that way I've got an adjustable canopy that I can um, put over me at a moment's notice but anyway that's just a, a little tip on some stuff that I do I like to keep an old, take an old washcloth with me from the house. You know, ones that's got, uh, like this got a little hole starting in it. And uh, yeah, I know you can buy all the fancy nice whatever. But <clears throat> being cheap as I am. And, uh, but I've, I've boiled up some water for my, kind of sanitize a little bit. And then uh, I just like to take a little damp washcloth like this and be able to mop my face off in the morning or something. And even though it's a cotton cloth, I can I can generally just hang it out on my ridge line or whatever, and it'll actually dry off pretty. It'll dry off pretty quickly, and uh, short of a short of a little bath or shower, it feels good. 
So anyway, there we are, camp cleanliness. <laughs> A little quick, quick mop off. Okay, I'm all packed up and ready to go. I used a different kind of nut right here. I did a I did a, a bite on a figure eight, and uh, actually I probably like to do a bowline, bowling probably, but on this side and over here I just did a uh, I just did a, a half hitch on the loop so I could snug it down good, and I've got good. As you can see right here, I've got my my fleece I put down on the tarp first, so when I loaded everything on top, it pushed it out. So the fleece becomes my padding. So now I've got I've got the weight carried nicely, and that pushes right in here to the small of my back. When I if I come off the top and down and cinch this around my waist. It pulls the load into the small of my back, so I feel almost nothing on my shoulders. Well, when we, uh, we look out through here, even immediately here, or back in that area up the hillside, we see a lot of pine trees that are dying that have, have a beetle or some of them some other some other disease or something like that. At first you think, well, it's, this whole thing's going away, but then when you look more closely, you see uh, all kinds of young growth coming up, and some of that will live and some of it will die, but uh, pretty much everything in nature, well, all of it, it does go through cycles. and. Uh, we find uh, out through here that used to be a probably a small lake or pond has has filled in gradually and now it's just kind of a wettish area and eventually that'll fill up with something and that will be gone and changing and uh, you know just like just like uh, bacteria and stuff that we worry about in medical and hospitals nature uh, Nature always finds a way to regenerate itself, and uh, to me, that's one of the that's one of the beauties. That's one of the beauties of nature is that it's always changing. I mean, granted, uh, one of my favorite camp uh, camp spots that we used to go on uh, week long family trips uh, is pretty much no trees at all left because of the the beetle and stuff that got into the pines but and it was beautiful we really loved it but it's changing and um, it's different now and uh, it may not be all that enjoyable for a while who knows but but you know nature's always changing that's something that uh, every time you go somewhere if you've been a few years when you come back something will be a little different so if we learn to um, enjoy the changing part of nature, the evolution and the evolving of things, uh, I think there's a I think there's a beauty even in the death of one thing and starting another cycle of something else. Come up this uh, kind of cliff area here, up some switchbacks and everything, and uh, and you look out up here. This is just a kind of a granite plateau up here. They look way off into the distance. Some of the peaks and lakes all over the place back in here. A lot of lakes. In fact, right over here is another one.
Well, I'm, I'm up here at about uh, 10,600 feet. I just kind of got to a ridge line here where I could look over into uh, another drainage. All the water, everything from there runs a different uh, kind of uh, north northwest where this runs more southwest on this side. And uh, I'm actually, it'd be interesting to go over that way, but I'm actually interested in a few lakes back over this direction. So I'm uh, kind of scavenging a route to get from where I'm at across over there. And I'd been looking for some uh, a plant called uh, stone crop that's very common in the Uinta range, and I think there's varieties uh, in quite a few different places. Some varieties are used in uh, rock gardening and stuff around homes and such. But let me uh, show you what I found here. These little yellow blossoms right here. That's the uh, that's the rock top plant. Now keep in mind it's very, so I put my boot there, <laughs> you see they're very tiny. Um, up here in these conditions on this ridge, uh, probably, I would imagine snow doesn't melt here till, so there's not much of a year. And so they're, they're more dwarf size than, than uh, in some other areas uh, in, in a 9,000 to 10,000 foot range. I've seen them uh, eight or ten inches tall. Now I was kind of uh, reckoning a way to get back over to uh, some lakes back over in there, and uh, I came out on the ridge line here just to kind of look around. And I did see a pretty good little patch of stone crops, although they are still small. We're going to go over there, and I'll t let you take a look at them a little better here. I'll put the camera on macro mode so you can see them a little better. Alright, so here's the uh, here's a little clump of the stone crops. Now these, the, the uh, upright stalk is very tiny and the little leaves on here the little leaves on there are very small and some of the ones in a better climate the leaves are perhaps uh, three-eighths of an inch long or so, something like that. Very thick and fleshy. Um, this this plant is very delicious to eat. Um, these right here, you'd have to eat a lot of them to get anything out of it. And since I'm not eating, you know, I'm going uh, three days or so without any food while I'm kind of trekking around. But, uh, but anyway, these on the on the larger plants at perhaps a more sheltered location um, and getting eight or ten inches tall you can uh, you could you could forage a quite a good bit out of them because they they tend to colonize kind of like these here's some more over in here and then here's some more back in here so typically where you start to find them you'll find a quite a few of them the flavor of these things is is similar to me to uh, alfalfa sprouts yeah kind of I'd almost say like bean sprouts but they're not quite because they are pretty fleshy but they're not quite uh, not quite like they're too small to be kind of like a bean sprout but and typically what's the best part of the plant is when it gets taller is these is the leaves that grow right on here the blossoms are slightly bitter and these little uh, base parts down here are a little bitter but if you can find these where they're a little taller uh, those leaves and even the stalk part of it the blossoms like I say a little bitter, bitter but the leafy part right here very very good nice mild flavor and you could eat you could eat a ton of them so here's an example right here of some I found in a little different depression in the rocks. So as you can see the leaves are much the little leaves here are a little are much fleshier than those other ones I was showing you. And this plant is kind of interesting because the has a the leaf is uh has five petals on it and they're and they're very pointed towards the outside. Very so soft but pointed.
I tell you what, is this not just beautiful back here? All this country I'm enjoying on this little trek. Uh, man, it's just this area right through here is one lake ends and another one starts. It's just uh, beautiful against the, uh, the stony uh, mountainside up there and everything. Beautiful and the meadows along the lake with all kind of flowers. Just uh, stunning, just beautiful. And uh, I'm doing real well trekking around. I'm, I, I got off the trail, I don't know, earlier today, but I'm just kind of wandering around here and there. Just kind of trying to take everything in. But uh, I'm loving it. I'm doing really well. I'm um, coming up on a few more hours, I guess. It'll be 48 hours without any food. And uh, I'm doing real well. Not really, I'm really not noticing much difference, actually. Um, I've been drinking water, not as I thought I'd need to drink more water to uh, to feel better, but I'm actually uh, actually feeling all right anyway. So, but uh, keep trekking along here and give you some more beautiful sights. Well, I'm up here. Set up for camp. I decided I'm not going to uh, not going to build a fire tonight. I don't have anything to cook anyway. Um, if I heat some water, I can use my trangy inside my nano stove. So um, so you know, I don't know. See how it goes. So I decided since I'm not actually I'm not setting up a tent, I'm not starting a fire, I'm pitching kind of close to the lake. Hopefully I'm not in trouble. <laughs> but you know, hey, with the multicam, nobody even know I'm here anyway, so. <laughs> but uh, I know I'm starting to, uh, I'm at about the 24 hour mark, or 48 hour mark here of not eating. and. Uh, Finally, the last hour or so, I've been up here at this lake. Uh, I've walked around it and around a couple others around here and just kind of scouting around. And uh, <clears throat> I just, I'm starting to feel some, a little, I'm starting to feel a little bit of some weakness from no food, but I think I'm all right. I don't, I don't feel really bad I'm just starting to feel some effects and it's kind of surprising I thought I would feel a lot more a lot more than I am so but we'll see what tomorrow brings that'll be interesting but anyway I'm going to go ahead and finish um, setting up the hammock here I'm going to go ahead and put my get my blanket set up on it and everything I did it last night in the dark because I piddled around too long I can do it that way fine but it's it's a lot easier to get things just right while it's light. <laughs> I got my ridge line up here that I'll hang my flashlight from. So that's all set. Well, my uh, need to do a little adjustment on my Roycroft pack frame here. And uh, I got by coming up here. And uh, I'm actually going to do a video showing exactly how to put one of these together. But, but anyway, well, I won't get into that. But anyway, these are tied with jam nuts here and here, and then up top is just a lashing. But I noticed on my hike up here, the, this is the bottom piece. This one uh, just kind of started feeling like it's going to come off. It actually never did, uh, partly because the more it tries to move, this knot just tightens. But I'm kind of a little concerned about it so I'm going to take this and I'll have to cut it off you can't use it once you've then I'm going to cut that jam knot off and then I'll have to loosen this top and I'll show you why in just a minute uh, when I tie this thing okay you see I've got the uh, frame on the ground I've got it apart now this is the this is the one I was redoing and when I did that jam knot down here I did the jam nut on there. What we want to do is we're going, we're going around it to the inside when we make our, when we're tightening this down. 
And what that does is the more the more I tighten it, it makes this stick here want to come out this way. And that's what I want, because I want to tighten it as tight as I can get it right here. And then when I tighten the tops together, then what that's going to do is that's going to put extra binding on this. So even though that knot will start out tight, it'll be even tighter once I put it together at the top. Alright, so you remember when when I tied this knot here and the top wasn't tied together, when I tensioned it, this stick here was going out this way. So this cord was running this way rather than back over here. So I got as tight as I could there and then when I pulled the top together to tie off the two tops, the leverage of this stick pulls against that and it twists the knot, the, the cord is, is twisted between here and here. So what that's doing is that's adding even more binding force here and that makes it so this thing won't even hardly move at all. So there we go. Got my Roycroft pack frame all fixed up again. Well, nice day it looks like out here. Oh man. What a good night's sleep. It's about 8 o'clock. Slept in a little bit. But uh, a little chill in the air, but not bad. Tell you what, since I started using these the survival blanket on here, I'm telling you what, <laughs> sleeping in this hammock deals. <clears throat> it's got so comfortable I can I have a hard time getting up. <laughs> Normally up camping, you know, you you wake up early because your back sore or whatever. You're <clears throat> not so comfortable. It's so comfortable in this poncho turned into a hammock and then the uh, blanket wrapped all the way around it. It's, it's so comfortable sometimes it's hard for me to get up. <laughs> but I don't have any obligations. I mean what the heck. <clears throat> when I'm up, when I'm out here it's good to go. Um, I had a good good sleep. Uh, rained a little bit during the night. When I heard the raindrops start coming down. The, of course, the blanket's water repellent, so <clears throat> I mean, a, a raindrop was just kind of went off of it. But I just reached up, I just kind of sat up a little bit, reached up and grabbed this, pulled it over the top of me, went back to sleep. And a little while later, when it had stopped, I woke up and just uh, shoved it all back that way. And this was my mag light LED. And I just I usually keep it on a little carabiner up here and something in the night or whatever I just reach up and turn it on. And on the maglet I took the the front lens part off because they're, they're made so they can be like a candle. So as long as that thing's off, it gives light all the way around. So it's more like a light bulb. So I kind of like that because it lights everything up. And my mora knife I usually just hang it up here so it's handy. <clears throat> but uh, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually I'm in my third day of no food, and uh, and actually when I actually when I think about it, in in four days I had one meal, and I'm feeling pretty good. I mean this is really uh, eye-opening to me. I guess it's surprising how how little food really matters in a in a few days time. <clears throat> I was I just figured you know, I'd I'd been I'd been a day a day before that food or something occasionally but I think my whole life I mean that's probably about it. And it's like I you know in your mind you just think you just think it's going to be harder than that. But really my body's adapted pretty well to it. Um, 
yesterday evening after I got after I got everything set up here and did some things around camp and I went for about a uh, about an hour and a half I guess total hiking back around here to some other lakes and looking at different things you know and and I didn't have any problem with energy or anything like that I felt good and uh, and really I I really anticipated having possibly some pretty good hunger pains or something by now but really I mean when I went to bed last night my stomach was gurgling a little bit because probably because of no food in it <laughs> but it wasn't painful or really discomforting um, the effects of not the effects of not eating really it's more mental every so often like when I was laying in here before I got up I I had a thought it's like wouldn't wouldn't a frying pan of bacon and fresh bacon and some eggs be good right now <laughs> and yeah it would be but you know I got a I got a whole other day ahead of me yet but but uh I don't know, I, I actually surprisingly it, it feels pretty good. And uh, so I guess I, I'll get up and get some water boiling and so I can drink some hot water. It's like, it's one thing I have noticed, it's, I haven't drank as I thought, one of the, one of the things that, um, recommendations if you don't have food is to drink extra water to keep your stomach full so that um, that way you don't feel so much of the hunger and I really I tried to drink more water but um, I really haven't felt the need to I probably drank a little more than I normally would but not that much um, but one thing about it is after a while you get kind of tired of just drinking water um, so I think this this morning I, it, I found actually that if I heat up the water, you know, bring, boil it up the water and then let it cool down enough to drink, um, it actually goes down pretty good. So I can, like in the morning, I was going to do it last night, I, I got by that, but <clears throat> in the morning I'll tank up on a pretty good amount of water here, like I did yesterday. Of course I had the, the pine needle tea and stuff yesterday morning, but... <clears throat> but I'll, I think I'll just have regular water, just hot water. It goes down pretty, pretty good. Um, it's a little, it's easier actually. And it's supposed to be uh, assimilate into your body a lot easier when it's hot, especially if you brought it to a boil first. Um, it's supposed to do something in the molecules in the water so that when it goes into your body they they disperse or they're usable quicker and easier I guess I'm not a doctor or anything I don't know but that's what I've that's what I've read but anyway so let me get up get about get a few things done it's a beautiful morning out here the sun's actually up a little ways uh, it was a little cloudy till just recently and so it looked like the sun wasn't up yet, but the last of the clouds passed over and it's looking reasonably clear out here to the west where the weather comes from and pretty good. Maybe I'll get up here in my bare feet and pan the camera a little around for you this morning. Probably hear a little bit of noise here. There's a couple scout troops came up yesterday afternoon. This is a nice lake to backpack into. And uh, even a couple families with young kids backpacked in and everything. But so there we are. It's a beautiful morning, and there's my little camp back in there. And I'm I'm just standing on the shore of the lake right here on some glacier-carved granite slab. So I'm not I'm maybe 20 feet at the most from from the. Uh, hammock and everything you almost can't even see it but but it's beautiful got some big mountains up here a lot of a lot of big boulders and stuff fell off I hiked back up back up through there yesterday afternoon 
a lot of big boulders and stuff that have fallen off of there. Some of them biggest houses. But uh, it's a doggone beautiful morning. I do wish I had some bacon and eggs though. But we'll have some hot water instead and <laughs> make the most of it. Alright, I got the stove. Got the stove operating. So dip in here. Get the pine needles out of there. Well, there's a nice steaming, steaming hot pot of breakfast here. Pour a little into there and... Ah, oh, nothing like fresh H2O straight out of the lake right here. Not, not five feet from where I sit. Tastes just like water. <laughs> Well, munch down on this for a bit. It'll, uh, I'm going to put this uh, simmering on here. Turn the heat down a ways. Kind of keep that going. Keep that warm while I'm going. There's nothing worse than drinking lukewarm water. So, uh, got to be cold or hot so while I'm it'll take me a little bit to get this down and and that'll that way that'll keep that warm hot it does feel good that hot hot water going down we've been toying around for about a year with these view bags and this is one that Shauna actually made up a different way than I wanted it's actually too tall <laughs> but I brought it anyway, but uh, we're going to have a size about half that size, but the nice thing is you got your color coyote camouflage or black sill nylon or whatever, and then all the way around, it's, uh, it's kind of a lightweight, um, optically, optically clear uh, all-weather vinyl, so you can see everything that's in there without, so if you had a bunch of these bags in your pack, you don't have to open them all to see what's in there. You just look and you can see. And uh, so, I mean, that works out pretty nicely. Now, let me show you what I did here in uh, pitching up my hammock. Is this, these, these trees right here are kind of young and the bark's a little soft. So, uh, <clears throat> typically we just pitch with parachute cord and most of the time we're on older bark that it doesn't you can't even see really any evidence of anything by the time you pull down but what I did here was I took my this is the rope I used for my Roycroft pack frame and so I just took it and I zigzagged it all the way around the tree and then I tied to that that way it's got a cushion so the the parachute cord isn't biting into the bark on the tree. Now another thing, since the diameter of that tree is a little small, um, it would hold me, but it would pull it pretty good. So what I did is I gave a little extra support by, I came off of here, over to this next tree behind it. And I just tied that off and I used one of the pulley style knots to pull some good tension on it. So now the two trees are working in tandem. Uh, to support me and they did really well I mean no problem at all all right I'm I'm actually uh, been in the process of making uh, some videos on the knots but I'm just gonna show you real quick right here <clears throat> now these what I did is I put some uh, I put some extra loops on here so it'll give me instead of having to wrap the cord around the these I'll just go right through the loops I'll make it easier to strap my pack on so if you're doing a uh, clove hitch everybody probably knows basically you cross over one time bring your end through and then when you pull up on that it should look I'll rotate it down spread it apart a little bit 
should look like that. So that's your clove hitch. Okay, now, if uh, to make, uh, I used constrictor knots on these, which are very, very tight. And uh, they prob I'll have to cut them off if I want to do anything with them. So to make, to make a constrictor knot, you just make a clove hitch like that. And then this side here, the, your long end, running end, you just extend it out a little bit to give you room. Just take your end of your cord right here, just put it underneath there. So all I'm doing is wrapping it around one time. And now you notice when I pull this down, the piece that crossed is now over the top of the, piece, the two ends that are, these two ends are twisted together underneath there. So when I pull in on this, even just as little as I did right there, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's hard to get it undone. But what I did on these, I used my foot on one end and I pulled really, I pulled as tight as I could. So those are permanent. <laughs> but that's all you do for a constrictor knot. And now, see, I can just, uh, I can rotate it up here and I have a tie-out loop on the bottom if I want. So this is, uh, that was uh, not used by uh, flower, people in the flour mill in the older days. When they had a cotton flour sack, they'd, ga they'd gather the top together and they'd throw that. There's another way you can do it. And I'll show you on the dedicated video about it. But, and they'd basically put that knot on there. And, and that's, nowadays they sew them together, but back in those back in those times that's uh that worked very well it's a very very nice knot made known by a lot of different names now the other knot i used here down here on these on the two corners bottom parts of the uh frame is i used a jam knot and i tied it around the two two pieces that were crossing each other i'm just going to show you straight out on this right here for now what you want to do is you want to tie in an uh, overhand knot in the end. That's a stopper knot because you're, you're able to put a lot of tension on here and uh, the knot will run off the end if you don't have a stopper knot to, to, start, to keep it uh, from going. So what I want to do now is I just come up around and now I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a and like an overhand knot right here and that's around this end here so what I've done is essentially I've made a slip knot okay <clears throat> and now uh, in order to the way this thing's going to tighten down you're going to you're going to keep the knot from coming undone by putting a half hitch in here so what I did is I just pulled a loop on inside of here so this other end just hanging out and now you'll notice this right here has become a pulley basically and I can pull I can pull hard enough that if I was using a stick to pull with I could potentially pull hard enough to even break this parachute cord but all you want to do is I'm not going to go that tight here because I'm just demoing but you just start pulling on that and as you pull on it you notice see the stopper knot is winding up right there so that's why you have to have that it'll come off of there and now when you're done, see since I already pulled a loop through there, all I got to do is pull like that. And now I have a half hitch. I have a half hitch in the end of it. Cinch down on that. That'll keep that from ever coming undone. So I will have, I'll have separate videos dedicated to these two knots. Because there's actually different ways you can tie them and a lot of things you can do with them. But since I did feature it in, in the Roycroft pack here yesterday, I thought I'd just do a quick video so you could see how we tie those. And then just watch on YouTube and I'll have some dedicated videos coming up. Well here's how we uh, pack up the uh, Roycroft pack frame. So you lay the, uh, the frame itself on the ground. Then lay the tarp over the top of it uh, centered in all directions. Lay down your soft gear first. Um, sleeping bag, that sort of thing. Then on top of that you can pack whatever else you want. Um, and then uh, we fold the sides in and then we fold uh, the bottom up and then after we fold the bottom up and get everything kind of tucked in nice then we uh, pull down the, the top part fold it down nice and then after that we're ready to use the parachute cord to lash everything up with the uh, 
with the uh, loops that I put on there. And then uh, the carry strap goes on next. Well, here I am heading out of this venue and off to see what other sights I can see here today. I'm uh, going on to three days without any food. Four days, four, in four days, one meal. And uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Uh, see how it goes as I get along the trail here a little ways, but I feel pretty good. So hopefully we keep on rolling here. Well, the trek's about over. It won't be uh, long now. We'll be back to the trailhead. I can hear cars off in the distance. Um, and uh, coming up on, on three days without any food at all. And uh, four days with only one meal. So, did pretty good. Uh, one thing, I, I was a little more uh, out of energy today than before. Um, and I kind of found that it seems like my, I'd be all right if I stopped for a little bit, like maybe a half hour. <clears throat> take a little break seemed like my body recaptured the energy and then I could go again just like normal and then you know after a little while I have to stop again so um, all in all I'm, I'm surprised that uh, I'm surprised that it wasn't you know all that bad uh, three days but uh, I think psychologically now that I know that you know, here within a few hours or so, I'll probably be eating. <laughs> That's really ha it's really haunting me bad now. <laughs> uh, before it didn't really bother me. I, you know, I kind of kept busy with things and and uh, wasn't that big a deal. But there definitely is, a, you know, a powerful craving coming on. The, and I think again because mentally, because I know that I won't be that long before I'll eat again. So, but, but I'm amazed how how well it went. I really honestly thought that it was going to be much, much tougher uh, doing this, but not all that bad. A nice learning experience. One of those things, you know, you kind of got to do it to find out um, what it's like and what happens, what you can do. Kind of learn from it. So, so I learned some on the, on the lack of food deal and uh, you know, that kind of influences, like in North America, if a person gets stranded or lost or something, the average is less than less than three days they're found. So, you know, if you're out, if you're out, I mean, three days is not, you can pretty well function like normal for three days if you have, if you have some water to drink. And here again, I noticed I really, I, I drank probably slightly more water than I would have drank, but not that much. I thought I was really going to have to gorge myself to get through it, but I really didn't have to do that much. I feel pretty good. So I learned that. I learned a few more things about using my uh, Roycroft pack frame and everything and uh, putting those loops on that I showed you. Um, that really helped lashing. It was a lot faster lashing this up. And I think I got to lash my load on a little better too. Uh, carried nicely. Um, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, a video just on the Roycroft packs, so I probably I'm not gonna get into it right now. But there's a couple more tweaks and stuff I think I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna keep going with this thing for a while and see what I can do with it. And uh, the idea here is is that you know it gives you the opportunity if if you got stuck or stranded somewhere. Um, you know, you can take three sticks and, you know, take whatever you got, whether it's a poncho, a tarp, or blanket, anything you got, and lash your load onto there. And you can hike around. We had to do a lot of, we, I say we, <laughs> it was me. Had to do a lot of boulder, bouldering around here. It's a lot of, a lot of rubble fields and stuff like that. Had to go through in some of the areas I trekked across there off trail. Well, even on trail, there's a lot of that. But, you know, the, the, the pack held the, it carried the load. Um, I felt 
I felt as good carrying this load uh, with this pack as really as really any pack I've used. I mean, it's it's very comfortable. And I think with a few more changes, I could probably uh, tweak it a little bit more, and I could become even more comfortable. And part of the concept here is I'm using my tarp as as the pack as the pack itself, and then some sticks for for the frame. So now when I get somewhere. I don't have a pack bag that's, you know, just sitting there. I'm actually going to use it for something. So, it gives me another use for my, for my, uh, for my PST, my tarp. And I could use this, the regular size PST or the big one. I'd just fold. I'd probably fold the big one a little bit first before I, you know, put everything together so it's not so massive. Um, I have, I have run this thing with my poncho, my PSSL. And that worked very well. Um, I've even used my uh, personal survival blanket. Um, and that worked just fine as well. So a lot of different things you can do. So that's a few things I was kind of experimenting with on this little trek. So hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, I'll probably do some audio, some audio podcast type deals of a couple things from here. So you might look forward to that in, you know, in the upcoming future here. So... Take care. Uh, man, I've absolutely loved this trek. It's been just fabulous. Just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, just a lot of fun. And uh, hope you uh, enjoy your time in the outdoors like I do. And uh, take care. Have a good, safe day.